unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. And blasphemy. Blasphemy is him, his Christianity, his politics, and him saying that he is a so-called Jew. That's a blasphemy. The Bible's his. God looks like him. His son looks like him. Angels look like him. The prophets look like him. That's blasphemy. But you see it all the time through what? His media. Excessively through his media. Over and over again. It's called Three Unclean Spirits. Three Unclean Spirits. Go to Revelation 16 and verse 13. It's long, so I'm going to try to cut it. So I'm not going to keep y'all. Revelation 16, verse 13. The book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 13. Now, some of you up in here may be new, so I'm not going to go too deep into it. I'll just skim the parts that make it easy for y'all to understand. I won't go into too much detail. Go ahead. And I saw... Three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Now, this dragon is a great red dragon who we know today as Edom or Esau, the so-called white man who's not white at all. He's red, different shades from pink to red. So this great red dragon, see it real quick. Revelation 12 real fast. So everybody can be on one accord or who this is. Revelation 12 and verse 3. three. Yeah. The book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3. No, because some of you maybe knew. When you read Revelations, the chapters, it's not different things. It's one long letter. So he's all in the same context. He's going in and out of time. But it's talking about the same topic. You understand? It's not Sir. Revelation 12 is one, one thing. Then 16 is something else. It's all one long letter being written. Chapters and verses were added later for reference. Okay? Go ahead. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 3. And there appeared... Another wonder in heaven. In heaven means in, in his vision he's seeing, in rulership. Go ahead. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. Meaning he had rulership. This great red dragon, when you read Genesis 25, 25, is Esau. Our, our forefather's twin brother, fraternal twin brother, Esau. Or our, our forefather Jacob, his brother Esau. Y'all understand? In Genesis 25, verse 20 to 25, that's who he's referring to. Let's go back. The book of Revelation, chapter 16, and verse 13. Mm -hmm. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. What color is this dragon? Red. Great red dragon. Go ahead. And out of the mouth of the beast. This beast is still that same great red dragon. It's called the beast or dragon. Go ahead. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. Read it again. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Stop. You just saw one on that screen. That's the mouth of the dragon. That foolish is there. That's one of the frogs that came out of the mouth of the dragon. This is called what we know today as modern Christianity. Modern. That's right. Based off of the Roman Catholic Church, all the denominations today, that's all modern Christian denominations or non-denominational it's all modern. That's, the, that's one of the frogs that come out of the beast's mouth. That has deceived and brainwashed our people first and foremost and the majority of the world. Because Christianity is almost damn near everywhere. Even it's in places that people don't want to be. Like in the Middle East, Ishmael fighting over there. We don't want that over here because they know what it leads to. It leads to homosexual pastors getting away with evil. Like this guy here you watch on the screen. Go ahead. Women, I'm sorry. Because the Modern Christianity is the root of democracy. I'm going to say it again. Modern Christianity is the root of democracy. What does democracy bring? It brings same-sex marriage. It brings transsexual, transgender bathrooms. It brings women in pants, women disrespecting men. Feminist movement comes behind that also. All kinds of evil and, and adverse behavior against God is what democracy or modern Christianity supports. Because if you notice, the modern Christian Catholic, um, pastors don't talk about what America in the Bible. They will not do that. Modern Christianity is set up to uplift our captivity. Make our captivity not so bad. It's okay. Just believe. Have faith. That's what the frog, that's what that frog does. It comes out of America's mouth. America, America, great. America, make America strong. Never forget. 
That's the, that's the mouth of the dragon. Y'all follow? Go ahead. Come out, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. What is the dragon's mouth? Don't, don't call out. Do not call out. I hate me to do that. What is the mouth of the dragon? Let me see the new hand. Some of them think it's freaking Lord of the Rings, a real dragon or something. Let me make sure I understand what I'm talking about. Uh, somebody. Mm. You, brother, right here. Yep, stand up. So I don't know it's you. The media. Thank you. Media. Social media. Yep. Your news network. 24-7. Yep. All day long. News was at one point in time. Think y'all some knows. I'm a younger man, but you know, at a certain point in time when TV was gone, it was off. Now it's all day. Christian Network, um, Animal Network, everything is just consistent. MTV Music, BET is consistent every single day. Sitcoms, cartoons, sitcoms oh. every day. And if, it, and if, it's, if, it, if the show ends, they put reruns. Rerun. Play it again. Over and over, it's repetition. Repetition is hypnotism. It's the same thing. It's sorcery. Go ahead. Uh, you know, my brother used to work to the We One in, uh, I think, in Channel 12. He used mm -hmm. to be the one who put their tape back to We One. You know what they tell him? They said, you cannot have We Cap. Soon one done, mm -hmm. put the other one. Because that's why they put men behind it. They say, you cannot stop. You cannot. As soon one done, put the other movies on. Yep. <laughs> Don't give people time to think. Yeah. Right. Keep them brain, why, keep them stupid all day long. Right. Dumb them down. Hey, uh, y'all just reminded me of something. I told this story a while back. Years ago, I, had a, I was living in North Carolina. I had a friend that was a DJ. He worked in a radio station in uh, South Carolina. So we went to visit him, me and my other cousins. We went to visit him. And while he was talking with us, because in the in the radio station you have several DJ booths, mm -hmm. and it's all connected to the tower that sends the radio signal out. And while he was talking to us, the record that was playing it ended, and it was silence on the air for like a few seconds. And the program director came out flying into the room where we was. He said, "Don't ever let the airwaves go dead. <coughs> Put something on that thing now. Get that thing ready." The point was because if you allow a space of time to in, to come into the airwaves, that second might cause someone to think. That's what it is. He said we must keep them occupied with TV, with drama, with this, with sports, whatever it is. Keep something going. It was amazing. He flew, white man, flew out the back. I said, what the hell is wrong with him? He was serious as hell. He said, put something on that thing. Get that thing going. A lot of people don't understand, Deacon. Uh, a lot of people don't understand. You know, some people entertain drugs, alcohol. TV is a drug. That's why you guys don't understand. TV is a, it's like a disease. You have to know how, what to pick from it. So the white man is a master of witchcraft. So the long that he keep you going, now look at our people. For a perfect example, you always in the street today. Our people is coolest. We even went to uh, Trinidad. It's just like you was in America. They walked by like they didn't heard nothing. Same thing our people in America is doing. America is pushing his fire spirit throughout the earth. You know how I got the Trinidad? You know how I got there? The ignorance he's talking about? Television. Yep. Cable. Yep. That's how it, media. That's how it got there. That's how, That's, his mouth. That's how his mouth. That's his mouth got there. Continue. <laughs> Read again. 13 again. Verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. Come out of the mouth of the dragon. So he mentions three. Three unclean. Go ahead. And out of the mouth of the beast. So he calls him a beast. Hold that. Get Ecclesiastes. So know what this is. Three in verse 18. Let's see what the beast is. Is it, be is it a literal beast he's seen? Well, he is, but is it, we're talking about an actual beast. That's what I mean. It's a similar to. Our forefathers saw things in visions. Similar to. Parables. Let's see what a beast is. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 18. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 18. I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that God might manifest them, and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. So what is man considered in the eyes of the Lord? Beast. When you don't have God's laws, you a beast. <laughs> you are immoral. You act on instinct like the Negro does today, like the Hispanic does today. We all used to do. 
act on impulse. Whimsical. Oh, I'm gonna kill somebody. Why? I don't know. It just seems like it's cool. I wanna buy some Jordans. How much do Jordans cost? Five hundred dollars. Your rent's due? Yeah, but I want the Jordans more. Impulse. Beast. No common sense. It's not there. That's what Nehemiah eight and eight. I love that scripture. Give them the sense. Because without the laws of God, we don't have it. That's why we're in this condition now, because we refused common sense. So we became beasts. So most of Solomon said, I realize that man is like beasts. Continue. Let's go back to um, Revelations again. The book of Revelation, chapter 16, verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. Talk about the dragon. Go ahead. And out of the mouth of the beast. This man, this nation, which is that great, this great red nation, which is Edom. Go ahead. And out of the mouth of the false prophet. What did John call him? The false prophet. He's also a false prophet because that's because false prophecies come out of his mouth. Like Eddie Long, for example. That's a false prophecy. That scroll was garbage. That ain't no real scroll. That's a damn comic book he got wrapped around him. That was no real damn scroll. They got them real scrolls in the Vatican somewhere in the Smithsonian vaults underground we can't see. That's what them real scrolls are that they stole out of our temple, hidden somewhere. That's where the real stuff is. That right there was toilet paper. That's trash. Wait a minute. What you just said there was heavy, Deacon, because you heard what the Deacon just said? Y'all know doggone well that wasn't the real Torah. And the, the 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 but why, but why did he put on those theatrics? What was the purpose of the theatrics? What was the purpose of the theatrics? Get the microphone to the brother. What was the purpose of the theatrics? Shalom. So it was basically the Jedi mind trick that Esau does. So that's, they could just forget it. That's the answer. Put him to sleep. That's what he did. That's why he did. They know that if Esau talks a lot, Negro's going to listen. Mm -hmm. He was He's a king. He's a blah, 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 doing all that madness. Knowing that Negro's is eating it up. Mm -hmm. White man is, is justifying Hedy Long. He must be clean. He's Jesus. He washed them in the blood of the white people. <laughs> Verse 14. <laughs> the Revelation 16, 14. For they are the spirits of devils. So these unclean frogs are the spirits of devils. Spirits of devils. Go ahead. Working miracles. Working miracles. Which go forth unto the kings of the earth. So the miracles is, is the sorcery, the witchcraft I was talking about earlier. The sorcery it goes into its technology also because, of course, technology brings us to the media. YouTube was established 2005. This, this media brings forth technology. It shows um, cars. It shows off the new TVs, the new games. All that stuff ties in together. There's a movie I watched. Uh, what's it called? Thor. Thor was not the last second one, the first one. He says, in our world... He says, what you call science in your world, we call magic. That's what he said. Because he so knows that there's a very thin line between the technology and magic. Because you think about it. You look at the, the phones from the 90s and the TVs from the 90s versus the ones you're looking at now. You could touch the screen, the water ripples. My laptop, I'm like, I'm going like this to my, the camera, the water ripples. What the hell is this? is crazy. Now, I'm, I'm wild by it, but it's a devil. I'm like, oh, this is crazy. But the point is, is that the technology, <laughs> he's was a devil. But the, the point is that the, the technology itself is witchcraft. You could take a man's penis, cut it down the middle, fold it up, and turn it into a vagina. That's witchcraft. Cause a woman's step to, um, menstrual cycle to stop for a complete year. At the cost of her own life, that is witchcraft. Give a man some breasts, that's witchcraft. That is madness. Having people able to, to send a text message, like says, text message, that's witchcraft. How do you know how to do that? Travel in space, who taught you to do that? Make a nuclear bomb, who taught you to split atoms? Who taught you that? Where did that come from? You notice all the scientists always look strange, they always look weird. They always have a weird look about them, Einstein, they always look funny. Satan goes, him, use him. And the Lord goes, Satan, make them, use him. Okay. You know, he's, he's, an, he's an employee. That's all he is. Yeah, yeah Deacon Arthur, you notice that they look strange. You know why they look, there's things that they don't entertain in this world. Yeah. They're usually by themselves. Cut off in the world, yeah. Like the guy you just mentioned. Einstein. Yeah, uh, he studied, he had a private, he had, I think, one or two private books. He would go in the middle of the sea for months. Mm -hmm. 
You understand? And come with things when he come back. Yeah. You, know, you, you read about that. He too. went to visit Satan. Yep. Yep. He said, I'm going on a trip. I'm going to meet Satan. Mm -hmm. When I come back, I got something for you. Yep. Hey, um, can I pull one precept with um, deceiver? Awesome. You got um, deceiver. Oh. I mean, devil, devils. Oh, yeah. He said, for they are. For they are spread of devils, right? Um, verse, verse 14. 14. It says, for they are spirits of devils. Mm -hmm. All right, what does that mean when it says they are spirit of devils? All right, because a lot of times when we hear the word devil, we get confused. We think it's a little black demon running around. But when it says the spirit of devil, the word devil means deceiver. For they are spirits of deceiver. All right, and as Deacon Iton bringing out, the, the, the media... The Christianity, all these things they are using to deceive us. The technology. All right? Um, read Revelation 13 and 14. Revelation 13 and 14. The book of Revelation. I'm going there later. All right. I'm all right. Going there later. I'm going there later. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. Go to 1 Timothy 4. All right, 1 so. Timothy 4, verse 1. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. 1 Timothy 4 and verse 1 about spirit of devils. The book. Of First Timothy chapter four and verse one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Seducing spirits, go ahead. And doctrines of devils. Which come from seducing spirits. Those so seducing spirits are your pastors, your political leaders, your scientists. You got Jakes who love, they love evolution. Love it. And, and, that's, and believe it or not, that's a religion. Believe it, I'm going to tell you how it's a religion. The Big Bang Theory, there's no proof that it took place. Only off of Darwin. Darwin says, yeah, two rocks smashed together and blew up, made everything. How you know? Darwin said it. So Darwin would be your God. And his scientists, his contemporaries would be the prophets of him. So Negroes worship Darwin and his prophets. That's a god. Esau is their god. Because there's no evidence of it. It's garbage. Seducing spirits. And when you believe in evolution, it knocks the Bible out the way. Because the Bible doesn't deal with that. So it negates the Bible now. Well, if the earth is billions of years old, you can't believe in Adam. You can't believe in Noah. That's garbage. When there's no evidence of that stuff whatsoever. Can I read something? Over on the same. Okay. No, you wanted to finish? Well, I wanted to deal with the part of the verse. I don't okay, know. Yeah, yeah. You see where it says, read it again. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. Now, that the, the, now the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit there is talking about the Most High in this yeah. Bible. That's why that Spirit is capitalized. Mm -hmm. Read it again. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times. That in the last days. Some shall depart from the faith. What is the faith that the Bible is talking about that many shall depart from? Give me the scripture where it says by hearing and. Yes, that one. Watch this. A lot of people don't understand the, 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 the heavy vibration that Satan is putting out here. We're going back to that because that was where Deacon Ithon was. I don't want to take him from his scripture, but I didn't want to pass by that faith part. Y'all got that? I'm not following on. Just, just give it. Just give it. Where's it? Seventeen. Seven. Right. Romans what? Ten seventeen. Ten seventeen. That's it. Romans ten seventeen. Let's so take, then, let's take it slow. Go ahead. So then, faith cometh by hearing. So then, faith cometh by hearing. Go ahead. And hearing by the word of God. And hearing comes by the word of God. So as you listen to the Bible, that's why you put on classes, you read, be in conversations with brothers and sisters that's reading the Bible. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Put on the scriptures, put on the class, put on a video. Let those, let that scriptures run on you. That's how you build your faith up in the Bible. Y'all see that? Read it again, Liam. So then faith cometh by hearing. So if you want to increase your faith, you must hear the Bible. Go ahead. And hearing by the word of God. And you will be able to hear properly when you adhere to the word of God. So the Bible is what, is what our faith is. 
believing and following the Bible. Now go back to the scripture that Deacon I thought was on. Verse 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. That's where we were at. Listen. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. So what will make people in the last days start to leave the Bible? Just, just telling you. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Television. Christian programs and all that garbage. As you, the more you hear these people, you begin to read the Bible less. You will begin to believe the Bible less. I'm going to give you an example. Give you an, an example. Does the Bible permit cross-dressing? No. Does the Bible permit same-sex marriages? No. But in the latter times, some people have departed from the faith giving heed to the seducing spirits of neutral gender bathrooms. Giving heed to men marrying men, women marrying women. After a while, the Bible is not hip anymore. It's outdated. It's, outdated. it's not in with the times. You stupid. That's what we read. Read it again. I'm giving it back to the deacon. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. You notice it didn't say all. Some because the one third is going to keep the faith. Some shall be stupid enough to let the Bible go because they're going to give heed to seducing spirits and they're going to give heed to the doctrines of devils. Read on verse... Uh Two. Verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Read it one more time. Speaking lies I'm sorry, and... I'm not, I'm not there. I'm sorry. Let's, let's get First ahead. Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. What does that mean? Let's see who gets that. What does that mean? Having your conscience, your conscience is what? That's your mind, right? So what does it mean to be sealed with a hot iron? Come on, newer hands. You right there, bro. Stand up. Yep. It's saying that you're taking on the doctrines of this world and it's going to be seared in your mind that you're not going to believe in the true faith. Mm, it's too many words. You're right, but um, something a little bit more simpler. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. You. Yeah, stand up. Shalom. Shalom. It means like sealed in your head. Like right. It, it ain't coming out. It's like you burn, you iron your clothes, and you burn that thing. Like, oh, it's, that burnt brown mark is gone. It's stuck in there. You can't get it out. That's what them doctrines are. After a while, it stays there. You can't get it out. You, you took heed to it too much, so now it's just stuck there. Now you finished. Your eyes are darkened forever till death comes. That's what it basically means. How many of you, how many of you iron clothes? If that iron gets on a certain part of the garment and you leave it there, it gets that burn mark on it. Can you get that burn mark out of it? That's what the scripture is talking about. It's seared with a hot iron. That's why it's using that term there, hot iron. And when you burn up the clothes, with the big, leave the big triangle stain in it, it ain't never getting out. So what the Most High is saying here is that some people's minds are going to get fried in these doctrines of devils. I'm going to give you an example of what can cause that, that sear in the hot iron. Did, real quick, Proverbs 18, verse 1. I'm digressing for a quick moment. Real quick. I'm going to say what leads to that. Giving heed to seducing devils. Doctrines of devils. Seducing spirits. Because oftentimes, brothers will be in here with us for years. They'll spend years with us, and they'll be teaching in the corner. He saw as a white man. Then they get offended. Get correction comes along, and all of a sudden, I don't know if he saw the devil. The white man is Japheth now. He's Japheth because he's so tubular and gnarly like the Ninja Turtles. Cowbunga, dude, yeah, yeah, they're cool. That's what happens after a while. When you do what? Proverbs 18, verse 1. This is what happens. Proverbs 18, verse 1. Through desire, a man, having separated himself. Having what? Having separated himself. Desire means his lust, what he wants to do. Follow his own mind. Read again. To desire a man, having separated himself, seeking and 
Intermetals, intermetals was all wisdom. Intermetals means he deals in everything. Now he's into Egyptology. Now he's into evolution. Now he's into this. He's everywhere now because he stays to himself. That lead, that's how Satan gets you. Stay to yourself. Your mind start getting, starts to wander. Oh, man, what about evolution? Is he so rated white man? I don't know. Maybe he isn't. Maybe he's cool and that yellow hair is of God. That's what happens after a while. That's what happens. Your mind starts to wander and seek if it's intermeddling. means you start to meddle in this. You're everywhere. Doctrines the devil, seducing spirits. That's what happens after a while. And you stay to yourself. Now, today, there was a guy, he said he'd been watching our UIC for a long time, but he said he had a few questions. So I said, go ahead, brother. There was one of his doctrine they, they had in his head. He said, Japheth, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I said, brother, let's think back. Do Esau come out of Japheth? I said, no. It's coming out of the shame, right? I said, what the hell with that doctrine, Japheth, Esau? I said, in Genesis 25, tell you Esau is. Mm-hmm. I said, sometimes you're caught up in things, the virus that is in this world. Then he said, oh, I just want to know. But I say, brother, seed we mean the seed. The seed of Esau coming from Shem. I said, what is Japheth? Japheth was a, a brother of Shem, right? Then I say, you see how simple that thing is? Mm-hmm. But understand, that's how you cut through that. Revelation 13, 10 cuts through that. No, you're not going to go there. Y'all know what it is. He that leads into captivity yeah. shall go into captivity. I don't care if he's ham. They're going in slavery. All of them. So regardless, these Jap- they just don't want to play musical chairs. They won't argue about who Arabs are or who Moab and Ammon is. They always focus on who the white man is because they want to save him. Like, I am legend. I can save them. But they're trying to kill us off the earth. That is the same mindset. It's, the, it's that Stockholm Syndrome. They'll make him everyone else but the Bible, who the Bible condemns. They're trying to remove him from that condemnation. That's the point. So don't, don't fall for the semantics. Let's continue. Go to um, 1 Timothy 4. Read verse 3. I'm going to move a little faster. Read verse 3. 1 Timothy 4, verse 2. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. Ha- having their conscience seared with a hot iron. They speak lies and hypocrisy. Then their, their, their doctrine is seared in their brain with a hot iron. Continue. Forbidding to marry. Now this goes into what religion in particular? Roman Catholic Church, which is where all modern Christianity derives from. All of it. Don't fall for the, no, I'm non-denomination. It's all the same. It's all different heads of one snake. It's no difference. Go ahead. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God have created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. So this particular religion was around during Paul's time. The Roman Catholic Church was established by what empire? That's why he's talking about it. That's why he's talking about it at this point here, because they were doing it back then. You had nuns back then. They weren't called nuns back then, but you had them. Priests of Freya, this and that. There was nuns back then also. The same custom, the same philosophies. They were what they call the catechism. That's what they call the catechism. Their own separate book that they, over, that they put over the Bible. The same way Muslims put the Quran over the Bible. Canon law, that's what they call it. So that's what they do. It's the same nonsense. All right, now get uh, 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3. So it's going into Rome. He's talking about Rome here. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Remember, 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 modern Christianity stems from ancient Rome. It's Roman Catholic nonsense. Read that. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Where's your mind corrupted at in Timothy? Where's that at? Where's the mind corrupted in Timothy? We read it earlier. Where do we find that same statement in 1 Timothy 4? Where do we find it? You, you brother. Where do we find the mind corrupted in, in this verse? Uh, Shalom. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. When your verse conscience is stayed with the hot iron. There you go. Paul said the same thing over and over again. The Bible, as Elder Kenai always says, is redundant. Repeats itself over and over and over again. All right, continue. Read again. For I fear, but, but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. Being slick, his craftiness. Go ahead. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity 
that is in Christ. But even Christ as a black man is very simple. But in, the, in that debate, the pastor said, it doesn't matter what color Christ is. <laughs> These pastors, boy, I tell you, they funny. They're comical they to me. Else. They are comical, man. Their theatrics, man, is, is entertaining. Stupid, but entertaining. Simple. I'll say, no, ignorant, but entertaining. I won't say stupid. That's too rough. We'll look, continue. Oh, look, look at those look, words. Yeah. I'm going to be real quick. Look at those words. It says, so your mind should be corrupted. See, people will read past that. I'm just saying in general. We'll read past that and don't understand the heaviness. And Well, if your mind is corrupted, that means it's no damn good. That's mm -hmm. what it's saying. Your mind is gummed up. It's like somebody put crazy glue on a lock. Mm -hmm. You can't do nothing with it. <laughs> corrupted mind is useless. <laughs> that your mind should be corrupted from the simple things that about Christ, like you brought, like you're bringing out, mm -hmm. the color of Christ. Mm -hmm. How in the world are you gonna have these theologians standing up in the front of a whole body of people, of black and Hispanic people, and you don't tell them nothing about the sim the simple things in Christ, mm -hmm. and you're trying to justify our oppressors in going into the kingdom? That is some that is some supreme corruption. Go ahead. Conti um, read on. Verse three again. But I fear. Lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Right. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached. So what nation came with another Jesus? Edom, because who else did? And the Arabs didn't make no Arab Christ. The, that Chinese didn't make a Chinese cry. Well, which one did it? Who was he talking about? It's obvious. Read again. For if he that cometh... Oh, Japheth didn't do it either. And when the hell did Japheth turn red? Where's that in the Bible? Let's continue. For if he that cometh... No, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. That's why it says not to be deceived by the simplicity that is in Christ. The Bible is a very plain book when you keep the commandments. It's very plain. Edom is red. Japheth is not. All of Noah's children are black, just like him, because Adam was black. Where in the Bible does Japheth turn white or red? When? Show me. Where is it? When is Japheth the last kingdom on earth? Esau is the end of the world. Where does it say Japheth is the end of the world? S simplicity. The simplicity. Continue. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached. They didn't preach this false one was to come in the latter days as seducing spirits. Doctrine of devils in 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Go ahead. Or if ye receive another spirit. Remember it said in Revelation 16, 16 verse 14. Spirits of devils. There you go. Spirits of devils. Seducing spirits. Doctrines of devils in 1 Timothy 4. Everything is, everyone, every prophet was saying the same thing. Paul and John were saying the same thing. Just different words. Go ahead. Which ye have not received or another gospel which ye have not accepted. Another gospel would be the Messiah was born miraculously. He wasn't born from an angel. He was born through angelic intervention. Angelic intervention. Angelic. So that sounds good. I, I didn't say what angel. What does it mean? I didn't say angel. I said angelic, angelic intervention. intervention. Pass the plate. Pass the plate. Pass it. That's what they, that's, it's, again, listen. The simplicity that is in Christ. It, what tribe was Christ from? Where does the nationality come from? Does there, is there a book that talks about his generations? Yes. Is there a book that refers to his genealogies? Yes. Why would we need to mention it if he was born miraculously? Why mention Joseph's lineage at all if he ain't his father? Right. That's the simplicity that's in Christ. The pastors, they didn't see it because it's burned. That, that iron burn is there. It's done. Everyone else in there, amen. Yep. All that audience there, seared. Dependence. Now, the most I may have sent us out there, maybe one of them, maybe the most I said that one right there, I'll bring him out of them. But the rest of them, nah, burned in, the, in their brain. Y'all understand? Continue. Ye might well bear with him. We, be we bear with them two days in a row. We dealt with them or bear with them two days in a row. In right. Days. We bearing with them ain't meaning like we're putting up with them. No. We tear that butt up in the scriptures. Yep. That's what it's That's talking what it about. Means to bear with them. Really <laughs> tear that them. butt up in the scriptures. That's what it means. <laughs> Go to Wisdom of Psalm 14 and verse 11. Eleven and Yep, verse eleven. Watch this. Psalm 
Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 11. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation. The Most High is going to judge the other nations also for their idols, because those idols became a stumbling block to us. So he's going to judge them too. Go ahead, along with us. Go ahead. Because in the creature of God... Creature means the creation of God, man. Go ahead. They are become an abomination mm -hmm. and stumbling blocks to the souls of men and a snare to the feet of the unwise. The deceive, or deceiving, seducing spirit. It becomes a snare to the unwise. Those who don't read the Bible or apply the Most High's laws. It becomes a snare unto them. Christ being born, it's not hard to understand his father was Joseph. But if you are unwise and you apply no laws, it becomes a snare, a stumbling block. I can't see that. He was born miraculously. It's impossible for him to have been born like everybody else. One dude put on Periscope, he was born through fornication. It, they've been convinced in the Christian church that sex is fornication. Some Christians say that Adam, that Eve ate an apple. Where is the apple mentioned in the Bible? It's not in there. But the, the fruit was him having sex. Oh, how is that a sin? If it's adultery, that's one thing. But that's not what it's talking about. But their minds, see what I had iron, jump down to verse... 12, read verse 12. Verse 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. So the devising or creating of creation of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. That's what caused Adam and Eve to fall. Go ahead. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. And the invention of them caused the immortal to become mortal. Go ahead. For neither were they from the beginning, neither shall they be forever. Go ahead. For by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world. Because men began to do what? They began to deify themselves. Nimrod was one of the first. The first. I am a god. When I die, I'm going to conquer the sun. And he became who we know today as Baal, Zeus, Odin. That's all Nimrod. Santa Claus, that's him. That's, that's all him. Then his mother became uh, Venus, Diana, Isis. That's who she became. She conquered, I think, the moon or Venus. Some nonsense. Continue. Let's go on, explain it. For the devising, excuse me, for neither were they, verse 14, excuse me. For by the vain glory of men, they entered into the world. And therefore shall they sh come shortly to an end. And Esau is being glorious and made us worship him also as the Messiah, as the Heavenly Father. Same thing, the Sistine Chapel. The, what, the, the pagan image of Christ. All, this, all from vain glory of men. Worship my son Caesar here. His father, Rodrigo Borgia, said, worship him. Make him Christ. Because they were vain glory. The nations are vain glorious. Go ahead. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning. It's giving you an example of how idols are created. Watch. When he has made an image of his child soon taken away. So this man decides his son dies as an infant. Go ahead. Now honor him as a god. So this child is now honored as a god. Go ahead. Which was then a dead man. Which is a dead man. Go ahead. And delivered to, to and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. So this child was now deified as a man. And then they begin to sacrifice and do ceremonies in honor of him. Because most of the time, you are, they, they'll say they make the Messiah always what? A child. Baby and the Jesus in the manger. And they have Mary holding the baby all the time. It's not a coincidence. He's always a child all the time. In movie. They have a new movie out, Young Jesus. It's not a coincidence they do that. They always make the child or deify the children all the time. Go ahead. No, hold on. Ahead. You know, when you read this scripture, he's telling you the father is what? For a father to do that, what kind of father? What kind of man he was? What kind of man who can do that? Who can help me? Your brother in the back, next to you. Next to you, brother. That one next to you. So, uh, Shalom. So, they're basically saying the father is a god to um, honor the son as a. No, they're showing you that men have power. Yep. For him to allow the follower to follow his son, he has to have power. Mm -hmm. Can a regular Negro who's talking about you worship my son? No. Mm -hmm. You understand? That's a man who got power. People was following him. Whatever he said, people bowed down to it. If that was not bowed down, that would put to death. That's a man with power. That's the same thing America did to us in this side. Yep. He had power of us bowed down in front of the cross. 
You understand? If you don't, I'm going to kill you. It's men with power. Go ahead. Continue. Verse 16. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. It was kept as a law. That custom of worshiping false gods was kept as a law. Now we call it Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's, Halloween, birthdays. It's definitely child worship. Birthdays beyond, that's one of the highest levels of Satan worship is birthdays and Halloween. Some of y'all love birthdays. I just love me. Worship me. Make a cake for me. Make a wish to who? Does the Lord answer wishes? Is the Lord a genie? Where are you getting this from? Simplicity. That's where it comes from. No one thinks about that. The candles, the round cake. What are the candles for? What the hat for? Who are you making a wish to? No, we don't think about those things until we repent. We're like, yo, why was I doing that? The hell was that? I was dumb as hell. I spent all that money doing that for what? On a cake at freaking Baskin Robbins for like $40 uh -huh. for one day. Uh -huh. Hey, I turn. I'm going to get I'm going to the damn car for gas. Even um even the baby shower. You know how they get the woman sit down and they come and all of that goes yeah. back to all that evil stuff, man. Yeah, continue. Uh, oh, could he oh. read could you read 16. 15 and 16 again? For a father afflicted with untimely mourning. Now, this, like Deacon is bringing out, this is what was done in the early, early times of Babylon and all that. It's going back to that time period. Listen to this. Listen to this. Go ahead. For a father afflicted with untimely mourning. So a father discovers that his son is dying. So he's all of a sudden, he has to mourn his child. Mm -hmm. Okay? His son just dies mysteriously. Boom, he's dead. <laughs> when? Go ahead. When he hath made an image of his child soon taken away. So he had made an image of this child that just died. It was his child was taken away. So he makes an image to this child. I'm gonna show you something. Go ahead, read. Now honor him as a god. So I'm gonna take the same child and honor him as a god. Go ahead. Which was then a dead man. Because the child had died. Go ahead. And delivered to those that were under him. Ceremonies and delivered to those that were under him. Did what? Ceremonies and sacrifices. So now they're gonna sell, they're gonna do ceremonies and sacrifices for my dead son. And I showed you the picture. I deified him mm -hmm. as a god. Here's the part that I want to get to. Verse 16. We understand from 15. Now watch 16. Thus, in process of time. Thus, in the process of time. Now, let me just be real quick with this. Go to, well, let me use an example. Donald Trump, how many of y'all know him? Would y'all worship him as Jesus Christ? Could you imagine many years from now him being worshipped as Jesus Christ? Be honest with me. Huh? They, 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 they were half confused. Let me, say, let me tell you the reason why I'm throwing this out there to you. Could you put up an image of Cesar Bogier, mm -hmm. the real Caesar, not the Christ image, the, ma the man himself? The, the man himself? What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Cesar Bogier. We're going to keep this up there. I'm going to give it back to the, to the deacon. Find the image of Cesar Bogier, the book, the Bogiers. The, well, there's one written by Sarah Bradford. Look for that book because I think it has his image on the front. There's a book entitled uh, Cesar Borgia, or Bourgeois. That's how they say it, I think. Uh, Cesar Borgia, C-E-A-S-A-R-E, B-O-R-G-I-A, -E, by Sarah Bradford. That's one of the women that wrote the book on him. I just want the book. Just show the cover of the book. You... Sarah Bradford. Put in Sarah Bradford. Her book should pop up. Sarah Bradford. Sarah Bradford. Sarah Bradford. F-O-R-D. Click. No, that's two of them. Okay. There's one where it shows his picture. An older one. There's this one right here, the purple one. Click that. I want y'all to look at this. Does anybody know who this is? 
Does anybody is anybody familiar with this person here? Okay, put that in the tab. Put that in the tab. Watch this. I'm gonna prove my point. Nobody knows who he is, right? He was the second son of Pope Alexander the Sixth of Rome. That's who he was, historically. Put that in the tab. Go back to the scripture that Deacon Ithon had pulled out. Come on, I don't want to be long. This verse 16, it says, uh, thus in the process, no, give me the verse before it. Okay, I'm going to just read through this fair. For a father afflicted with an untimely morning when he had made an image of his child soon taken away, now honored him as a god, which was then a dead man and delivered to those that were under him ceremonies and sacrifices. Verse 16, thus in the process of time. That's what I want to talk about. Thus in the process of time. So time had to pass by. Time had to pass by. During the time when this man was alive, go back to the image. During the time when this man was alive on the earth, he was just who they knew him as. But in the process of time, guess who he became? Jesus Christ. That's who the, the image that everybody's talking about is Jesus Christ is actually him. That's who they talk. Now, now show the other book so you can understand, so they can get the proof of what I'm just saying, where it tells you that who he is. Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, they were the ones that paint. They used him as the model for the new Jesus Christ. So as time passed on, in the process of time, he became Jesus. That's what happened. They got books on it. Okay, so I ain't going to top the deacon's class no more. So go back to the scripture where he was at. The book, the, the book by Marion Johnson, that's what you was referring to earlier, because it's two books. Marion Johnson, they actually tell you that this is the image, because they got sketches mm -hmm. by Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, sketching Caesar Borgia as the new image of Christ in the book. Thus, in the process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law. And graven images were worshipped by the commandment of kings. They worshipped the same man, Caesar Bogia, as Jesus Christ. That's the another Jesus that came that you was reading in the fourth verse of that chapter that you was bringing out. He that cometh preaches another Jesus that we did not preach. Because the scriptures, the, the, the prophets and the men of the Bible didn't write about Caesar Bogia as being Christ. All right, go ahead. Verse 16 tells you who the father is. Read verse 16, the bottom of verse 16. Get out, get out. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. That's what the father was. Commandments of kings. A father of a father of the time of morning, he established that law, the commandment of kings. That's you know he had Laba said he had power. Just backing it up. That Laba said it was a king. Go ahead. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. Which the commandment of the king was to make ceremonies to him, make sacrifices to him, to keep his memory what? Alive. Because so, listen to this. Check this. How far it goes. You have Jakes that worship Caesar and claim they don't believe in the Bible at all by their actions alone. <laughs> you, you, you have Negroes that believe in a so-called white man, Jesus, not even not saying it, but it's by their actions alone. How they act, how they talk. The same thing Christians do, these atheists do. Same thing Christians do, gang members do. They don't worship him maybe outwardly, they do it inwardly. A Christian is an atheist. Right, you're right. You're a so-called right. Christian is an atheist. They neither one of them believe the Bible. Yep. Go ahead, continue. Verse 17. Who men could not honor in presence. Because some couldn't go to the place where the child was, was made, the image was made, so they had to make, go ahead, continue, continue. Because they dwelt far off. They dwelt too, they were too far, go ahead. They took the counterfeit of his visage from far. They made their own image of the same child. Made their own version of this deified child, man child. Go ahead. And made an express image of a king whom they honored. And made him another one. Go ahead. To the end that by this their forward forwardness 
they might flatter him that was absent as if he were present. They can honor him while he's dead, honor him presently as if he's still alive in his absence, which we do with him. That's the other We image. honor him presently in his absence can't today. Y'all, can't y'all see the resemblance of this and that thing that they painted and said it was Jesus? This is Cesar Bolgia. That is not the Christ. That is the image of Cesar Bolgia. That's him again. Right. The and same person that showed earlier. And the counterfeit image is him having blonde hair, brown hair, blue eyes, green eyes, different versions, but the same guy. Same thing. Though so, no, you may have Baal, then you have Zeus, Odin. Same person, different shade, different nation. Krishna, Vishnu is all the same God. Same guy, different versions. In different worlds, amongst different people, but all worship the same way. Go back to the scripture. Who men could not honor in presence because they dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of his visage from far. What the, hold it. Who men could not honor in presence because they're not over, they're not in the original place. Go ahead. They dwelt far off. They took the counterfeit of his visage from far. Do you have those pictures in your houses? That's what I'm talking about, the Caesar Bogia images in your houses. So I don't have to be over there in Rome. Yep. I got Jesus right here with me. On my wall. I got Jesus on my wall right here with me. Mm -hmm. This is some real sickness. This is real sick. I remember the bishop, he, I'm going to just say this real quick. I'm going to be done. This is so funny. Me and the bishop used to work together years ago. And he always talks about the store that we used to work in. We, there was this Dominican girl. What was her name? Dulce. Dulce. D U. D D U L C E something like that. Do do don't say it. it's a Dominican name, right? Don't say yeah. So I can't hardly say it. Simple as she can be. We were trying to bring her the scriptures about Christ being black, and she looked at me. But both of us, we were together. She said, "I know Jesus is a white man." I said, "Well, how do you know?" She said, "I know because I know." I said, "Prove it." Guess what she said? Because he's on my wall. That, you're talking about the book was, I couldn't, uh, there was, I was speechless. I was, she shut me down with that one. The level of stupidity was so strong, I could not come back. Y'all, that was it. She shut me down. The, it was too strong. She said, because I have a picture of him on my wall. Mm -hmm. That end of the conversation, I said, that, Nathan, you, you, I, you, I can't take it. I got to go. Me verse 18. Also, the singular diligence of the artificer. That's the artist. Go ahead. Did help to set forward the ignorant to more superstition. What did the artist do? He did help to set forward the ignorant. Set forward the who? The ignorant. Unwise. Go ahead. The ignorant to more superstition. Because that's all you wear them on your neck. You go out, you look, you see, you go by a church, see Caesar. You, oh, no. Mostly Ephraim, sorry. Mostly I'll be doing that. And Levi too, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Shots, shots fired, shots fired. But the point, <laughs> but the point is that that's what, that's what happens, superstition. Oh, you bless you, or you, or you go, you pay before the stone cross. All, all Jake does it. All of us do it. But the point of the matter is that that's what Jake does. They call him the saints. All the same thing. Go ahead, continue. For he, peradventure, per willing to please one in authority, forced all his skill to make the resemblance of the best. That's fashion. what Leonardo da Vinci did. Michelangelo did the same thing. That's exactly what they did. They made the best one they could do. The sketches, they did it perfect detail. All right, fix his beard that way. Fix his hair that way. All right, do this. Okay, perfect. Now, paint it. Perfect, there you go. And that's how Caesar was born. Caesar Jesus is born. Go ahead. Can I say something? You as the worshiper, Master. you got to think about it. <clears throat> After reading all of this and having this understanding, here you got this guy that, that sat in his room and painted this thing. Thinking in his mind, I'm doing this to wipe out the minds of people that's going to that's gonna take my picture and they're going to worship it like it's Jesus. You got to just imagine you as the artist doing that and knowing that you're going to forward the stupidity of what was the scripture that you just, what was the one before that? Verse eight, 18, 18. Verse 18. Also the singular diligence. Of the artificer. Or the, of the artist. The singular diligence of the artist. He's 
paint, like to paint the eyes and all that. He's fixing it up, making it this way, that way. While he's doing it, he's thinking in his mind, these people are gonna be, they're going to worship my picture. Go ahead. And is there what? Did help to set forward the ignorance. To set forward the stupidity. The stupidness. To, to more superstition. To, to put them to more superstition and worship in my picture. Go ahead, Deacon. I, I, I got to be quiet after we this. Go ahead, do your thing. again? For he, peradventure, willing to please one in authority. Because Leonardo da Vinci was trying to please, Michelangelo was trying to please Rodrigo Borgia. Pope Alexander, the sixth of Rome, they were trying to please him. Make sure it's a bet. Make my, make my son look like Jesus himself. Get rid of that, that Negro thing. Get rid of that. Make sure. Right. Not make him look like Jesus. Make, make them believe he, he is Jesus. Jesus. Right. <laughs> right. Continue. Forced, forced all his skill to make the resemblance of the best fashion. Verse 20. And so the multitude allured by the grace of the work. And so the people of the world were allured. Like people say, oh, man, the statue bled. Through the, the white Jesus statue was bleeding through the eyes. That's that superstition of the ignorant. It's the same nonsense. Go ahead. Took him now for a God. As a Messiah. Go ahead. Which a little before was but honored as a man. Taking you out earlier. Years ago, he was just Caesar. Now he's the Christ. Because through process of time, it became what? He became a God. Through repetition. Now it's media, the passion of the Christ, comic books, Jehovah's Witness. Same, this constant, constant. Read on, next point, what's I want? 21. 21. What I want. And this was an occasion. No, read it slow. I want this part slow. And this was an occasion. This was a plot or a plan to do what? To deceive the world. To do what? To deceive the world. That's what idols are made for. To deceive the world. The world, the world. Go ahead. For men serving either calamity or tyranny did ascribe unto stones and stocks. Go ahead. So it starts to be your Christianity or your Islam. Go ahead. The incommunicable name. The Lord's title. This is the Lord here. Him right here. This is his son right here. That's what happened. There was the occasion to deceive the world. That's just going to bring it further into the class. I don't have much time, but I'm going to try to squeeze it in. Now, get me uh. You got Revelation 13? Yeah, I'm going there right now. Okay. I'm going there right now. <laughs> Again, uh, Revelation 13, verse 11. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, and verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, right. and he had two horns. So this beast... Had two horns, like, go ahead. Like a lamb. Those lambs have two horns, go ahead. And he spake as a dragon. So wait a minute. Can a, a lamb, uh, a dragon represents a fierce beast, violent, evil beast, versus a lamb. Can a lamb sound like a dragon? No, that's not sound like a dragon. That's just an animal, they call them bleeding. That's what they do. But it says this, he said he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake. What do you use to speak with? And what came out of his mouth? Three what? Unclean spirits. So he spake like a lamb. It says he had horns like a lamb, and he had the appearance of a lamb, of being gentle and innocent and pure and white, trustworthy. But outward, you know, inwardly, he's a devil. He's a yeah. dragon. Go ahead, yeah, Deacon. I want to say something. Uh, yeah. Do you remember the verse that we read about deceiving the whole world? You saw that verse that we had? Up, what, what, what verse well, was that? That was the Wisdom of Solomon. Could you read that once again? I'm sorry. Wisdom of Solomon. When I said 13, I didn't mean that. 14, verse 21. And Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 21. And this was an occasion to deceive the world. And this was done. That's what occasion means. It was done mm -hmm. to deceive the world. To deceive the world. What was the deception about? Taking this young baby and making him a, to a worship figure like what they did with Cesar Borgia. Mm -hmm. At first, he was just a man that walked around with the rest of the people. But in the process of time, that same Cesar Borgia became Jesus Christ where, in our minds, where we got pictures of him saying that we got, we got our Jesus right here on our walls. Revelation 12 and 9. 
Let me show who did Revelation this. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth mm -hmm. the whole world. Mm -hmm. That's what we just read. Yep. So who did the deceiving? The devil. Satan. Who's the one that's really doing it? Esau. He was the one that did this thing. The red man. He was the one that, he's the devil that deceived everybody. And the great, and he deceived the whole world. Listen to this. He deceived the whole world. There's no Bible on the face of the earth that tells you that Jesus looks like the image that everybody's worshiping. Mm -hmm. What kind of deception does it take to make the whole planet <laughs> think that Christ looked like this man's son? And the Bible tells you what Christ looks like. The Bible itself tells you what Christ looked like. But the whole world believes that he's Caesar Bogier. That that's Satan right there, but that's some real power. He said, right. the hell with the Bible. The Bible tells you what Christ looked like. They said, listen, I, my, my demonic power is so strong that it'll cover the whole Bible up completely. And it'll make them believe that Cesar Bogier is Jesus, regardless of what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what's very powerful, Deacon Yalsa? You know, when you're looking at, they're showing you another thing about the devil. You remember in Job, as God was talking to me, they're showing you another thing about the devil. He don't have power for the Bible. You understand? He don't have no power for the word of God. That's why he could not change it. The Bible was a preserved book for the Israelite. God do not let the devil have power over it. He would have changed it. He would have changed Genesis 25, 25. He would have changed Revelation. He would have changed Daniel. Yeah, all that thing that Bible say about that man, then why he didn't use a dog as a symbol? Why he use the eagle? Mm -hmm. They're showing you God don't give him power over the book. You understand? You're 13 and 11 again? Revelation one more time? Revelation 13 and 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. So he comes, he comes his, his appearance is gentle, kind of like a lamb. Go ahead. And he spake as a dragon. But in really, he was a damn dragon, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Now, give it a precept. Get Psalms 55, verse 20. So he was, if what David said, let's see if David said it. Psalms 55, verse 20. Psalm 55, and verse 20. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. Read it again. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. Go ahead. He hath broken his covenant. Now that happened on both sides of the world. When Esau was Rome, he, conquered, he did the same. He built the covenant with us when he was in Jerusalem. When he came over here as the Spaniards, as the um, cavalry troop, he broke numerous covenants and did the same thing. We were at peace with him on both sides. He conquered us on one side of the earth. And conquered us as Christians on the other side of the earth. Broke the covenant numerous, numerous times. But came off innocent, pure, for the, be for the better good. But he was a devil. Go ahead. The words. Treaties, they, call, they call them treaties. They call them treaties. Covenants are called treaties. Esau broke over 450 treaties with yep. the North American Indians. Yep. How many treaties does it take for, for the treaty to be in effect? One. All you have to do is keep one. He broke them all, mm -hmm. but yet he's Jesus. 450 agreements he broke with the North American Indians. This man's a stone cold beast. Yep. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, I was watching in the news uh, uh, about Washer. Washer said that the same beast, tell, he, was, he was complaining about white America. He's saying that these guys don't keep nothing they said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they say America don't keep nothing. He give you something, they'll go down the line and break it. This devil here, which is the same thing as the Russians, even his own brother understand that they are the devil. Right. It's so bad that the dude that went to the club, you, know, you black folks, how many of y'all in here? He said, y'all suffered enough. I'll just leave. White man and did y'all so bad, I ain't even going to kill you. Or yeah. not, I'm not going to kill more of you. Yeah, yeah in that club, the, home, the side of my club. He said, Who, who's black up in here? Black guy's like, I am. He said, okay, y'all get out of here. Y'all suffered enough. I ain't even going to kill y'all. Yeah, it might, have been, might have been a stunt. Regardless, two people testified and said he said it, so I'll go with what they said. Right. But that's what they say. That's what they say he said. Right. The point of the matter is, if he did say it, right. that lets you know that these nations know 
what they've done to us, especially what Edom has done to us throughout these years. Because you're doing the same thing to them over there. That's so what they're attacking over here. They know. Let's continue. Verse 21. The words of remember, his mouth. The lamb, sorry, remember the lamb and the dragon. 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. We come in peace. Like on the back of the dollar bill, what do you see on there? You see an eagle holding a palm in one hand and arrows in the other hand, representing what? Peace and war. Lamb and dragon. That's the, that's, he knows who he is. You see, the problem with you, if you go to separate yourself, you start to forget who he is. Minds start to get burned at simplicity, like he got Eve with. That's why I called him in Revelation 12 and 9, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Because the same spirit that deceived Eve back then is alive today as a red man, a red nation today. Continue. They cannot done. Hold on, brother. That man giving you, he giving us free welfare, free housing, well, free section free, free everything. Right? You telling me that man is the devil? Yeah. Well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know all these. That's smoothness. Yep. I'm gonna yep. give him everything. Let me see Kyle, if they're wish. gonna believe that. You watch them. Yeah. Watch them shows. They go. Um, then they get you lost your house. <laughs> like um, the guy that the, the boss is, the, the boss disguises himself as an employee he goes. I know you lost your house. Who has something to tell you? What is it? I gave you a ten thousand dollar loan. Oh my god. <laughs> Lord Jesus. They lose their mind. You can't tell that nigga no more. Esau's the devel. You gave him a ten a ten thousand dollar loan. You bought him a, bought him a new house. You can't tell Jake nothing at that point. Smoother than butter. Smoother than butter. John, John and Kate plus eight. Oh, look at the little cute white kids. Oh, bought them niggas over there. Look at the cute little white kids over there. Smoother than butter. And we fall for it all the time. I, that's why I said before, when it comes to Trump, I give him props because he's an honest devil. That dude speaks his mind. He speaks what he sort of doesn't want us to hear him say. Digging lava, you said what? The free section eight, free what? Welfare. Who stamps? I'm gonna show you how bad it could get. Oh, that quick. man is so smooth, right? <laughs> he give you free section eight, free welfare, plus a check, plus a plus another uh, uh, for the bonus. He give you a free phone. He give you a free oh, phone Obama for phone. the bonus. He say you Obama. need the free phone. <laughs> now, you need no. to talk to people. <laughs> it doesn't mean that's the devil. Now, we be out here teaching in the street, right? While we're doing that, we're blasting Esau, we're blasting him. The white man would bring up the Negro and let him tell his story. And when he said, listen, man, he gave me, I was sick. They gave me an operation, did this for me. I had cancer. My mother this and that. Gave me free welfare. Nigga, what you talking about? Mm -hmm. And get your own people to speak against you. Well, it's so bad, ice cream will turn Jake against you. Well, I experienced that. Oh, yeah. Esau, Esau turned my people against me for a freaking ice cream. They, they're licking it. <laughs> White man's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, I saw Christ Marvel telling you. Look at them like, Yo, the hell just happened? Ice cream. 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. The dragon. War was in his heart. Go ahead. His words was softer than oil. He had the palm in one hand. Go ahead. Yet were they drawn swords. Olive branches in one hand, arrows in the other. But what was in his hand? What did he Yet do? were they drawn swords. Or your guns, your cannons, your Gatling guns, your swords, your spears. That's what happened on this side of the world and in Rome. They surrounded us for six years. Knocked the walls down, came in there and massacred us to, to nothing. Killed us by the millions. They even give us a damn burial. Then the Arabs came up in there and cut us open and took the money out of our bum because we were swallowing our money. Listen, Matt, I can go into that all day. It's evil. Esau was evil as hell on one side of the hemisphere and on the other side of the hemisphere. They did the same thing. Both the walls down to the Aztec Empire. Both the walls down to the Inca Empire. Did the same exact thing. Spoke peacefully. Oh, well, we wanted some gold. And Asher was like, all right, here you go. Yeah, we want some more gold. Okay, here. Yeah. All right, yeah. Yeah, that right there. We want that gold right there. Gold brick right there. That's my house. Yeah, we want that, that gold right there on your house. Then they're like, no, I can't give you that. Stab, stab. That, that's how it went. No, they laughing. Deep. Y'all laughing, but that's how it went. To the point where they yeah, lied and yeah. say to us, we sold New York for 20 pairs, uh, twenty dollars of beads. Yep. And put it on a statue in Manhattan. I'm going to show. I'm gonna show.
Upper Manhattan now. Daniel 8.25. That's called gentrification. I'm going to show you gentrification in here. Watch. This is going into the Greeks now. It's the same people. Different, same devil, different title. Daniel 8.25. Daniel 8, verse 25. And through his policy also, he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. Go ahead, do his what? He shall cause craft. No, 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 no. Stop him again. And through his policy. Stop. That's the next unclean. That's the politics now. That's the politics. Democracy, Republican. That's the next frog, which ties into Christianity. Because if he can't get into your land through religion, he going to get into your land through them policies. That's some politics he gets into. So you got your Christianity now. Now we're going into the politics now. Read again. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. His crafty counsel to prosper in his hand. Go ahead. His witchcraft. Go ahead. Witchcraft. Go ahead. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. Now this is going into the Greeks, but East, the white man does this today. You turn the TV on. All you see is who? You look on the billboards, all you see is who? You can type in black nigger on Google. You will see white people. Excuse my language, but it's reality. Type in black woman braids. You see a white girl with braids. I'm like, what the hell is this? It's not a black woman. I'm telling you, cell phone. You see white people with cell phones. Do, do only white folks have cell phones? But that's what you see. That's that mouth. Flooding that white supremacy over and over in your mind. Trying to burn that white supremacy in your mind. Over and over again. Read again. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he does. Go ahead. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. That goes back, also goes back to Wisdom of Psalm 14. That deification, that deifying. Go ahead. And by peace shall destroy many. And by what? And by peace shall destroy many. This goes, this, the policy goes back to them treaties, those covenants, those business deals, those embargoes or sanctions, the United Nations meetings. is okay, well, you just work this out, work that out. Just to get in, plea bargains, just to get into your land. Okay, let's, let's put an embassy here. Let's, let's put an embassy there. Let's put a military base right there, too. You don't mind if we put a base there? Just in case, a business base there. Can we put our ships there? Can we put our people there? You're like, the hell is this? Why am I in the corner? It's just like, yo, why am I living in the corner? What the hell is this? Yeah. That's what they do. through so their policies, they get there. Because because Manasseh, I believe, is a, they say it was a communist thing. Communist state, I believe. Yeah. Cuba. But they still, Cuba. But they still accept Christianity, though. Yeah. That's all in there. So he saw in there one way or another, he gets up in there. Gad, Northern, Gad doesn't accept the Bible. But they do accept his policies. He'll let you have, you get the casinos, you can fix, you can use the money from that to fix your streets, fix your schools, your waters, all policies. He gets in you, he gets to, into you one way or another. And not just with us, with all the nations. And they're getting tired of it. Even Russia's his own people are getting tired of them. They're so devilish, they get tired of themselves. That's why a house divided against itself cannot stand, because they're stupid as hell. Continue. He shall also stand up. Against the prince of princes. That'll be on Messiah. Go ahead. But he shall be broken without hand. He can be broken without hand because the Most High ain't going to sit there and fight with him. It's like Mayweather, back and forth. He's going to destroy this place with spiritual power when he show up here. He don't hand for that. He's going to open his mouth and burn people up without touching them. Just speak, speak the word of the Lord. Kill millions. You know what you said is very powerful. They say, the Lord say, I will not meet you yeah, as a man. man. They're showing you that white men have some power, man. Compared to the other nation, these white boys is crazy. <laughs> Get First Maccabees 8 and 4. First Maccabees 8 and 4. To show you again that this is Greece, I'm going to show you Rome. Did the same exact thing because Greece and Rome eventually became what? They merged into one. The Greco-Roman Empire. Because they're the same people. First Maccabees chapter 8, verse 4. And that by their policy. And by what? And that by their policy. Their politics. There we go again. Their policy. Go ahead. And patience. And they wait. Mm -hmm. They'll do deals. They'll gradually they'll do, they'll do business with you. They'll do trading. Okay, let's buy some cars from there. Let's buy this from you. Buy that from you. Get in. Buy your oil. 
get in there, but they slowly seep in, whether it be through politics or through religion or through his technology, his witchcraft, sorcery, they will get in there. You got Ishmael for a second. You, got, you have Ishmael, I mean, it's Iran, yeah. where they're against homosexuality based on the Quran, but they accept it if you get a sex change. If you, get, if you turn yourself fully female as a man, they'll accept you. That's in Iran, I think. Iran or, I think it's Iran, right? But you see on this head. Iran. Now, this, now this is an uh, Islamic country. How did technology get there? How they want the, the Iranians come over here, or the, the universities come over to their land, teach them that stuff, and they bring it to their land, and this hell, hell breaks loose. Because they got in there. It, Esau got up in there. Where there's wickedness, Esau is there. He is the beginning and the end of it. Wherever you find evil, he is present in one form or another. Continue. Yeah, you remember what you said proved that. You remember what happened to New Hager. When he want that, that, that canal, you see what Noriega, they did to yeah. they, When he want that canal, he put drugs in there, then he said, you cannot support the canal. I'm going to send my people now. Yep. He set that thing up so lovely. When he come, you think he's God. He come to help the people. But he the one who set it up like that. Mm -hmm. That's the devil, man. Verse, verse Maccabees 8, verse 4. And yeah. that, by their policy and patience, they had conquered all the place. They did what to their patience and policy? Conquered all the place. Let's just talk about Rome. The place is Greece. They eventually conquered Greece, and then they merged together. They, they, they kept their Roman politics, but they kept the Greek religion and language amongst themselves. They just merged into one. Go ahead. Though it were very far from them. So they conquered places that were far, far from them. They're in Iran, they're in Iraq, they're in China, they're in Japan, they're everywhere. And that's not even America. And they're everywhere. There's a U.S. embassy damn near everywhere. Go ahead. And the kings also that came against them. And there were kings that tried to fight against them. Go ahead. From the uttermost part of the earth. Go ahead. Till they had discomfited they, Rome them. conquered them. They conquered them. Go ahead. And given them a great overthrow so that the rest did give them tribute Every year. Conquered them so bad, and they just like, yo, we can't mess with this nation. That's that, you know an example of that? Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That's an example. They said, America is a superpower. Them, them dudes, they dropped that bomb, told them people, nah, we mess with them. Treaty time. That's what happened. That's exactly what, that's that goes back to the, Revelation says, working great miracles. In Revelations uh, 16 and 14 and 13, I ain't even going there, but it's somewhere, I'll still take it somewhere else. But that's the technology again. That made this place great in such a short time. America's young. America was established, what, 300 years ago? It's a young place. And it's conquered so much in so little time. Because God had it that way. Yeah. Going back to what you said concerning the uh, embassies. It says right here, the U.S. currently has 294 physical embassies, consulates, and diplomatic missions across the world. See? With 27 in the Middle East and North Africa uh, region. 27 where? 27 in the Middle East and North, uh, and North Africa. Where they don't want them. Right. It's, that's called MENA region, which is more than any other nation. More than any other nation on earth. America has her hand everywhere. Like the Bible says. What is the name? The whore is in every water. And it goes, it goes to the scripture where it says that uh, Esau would be like the dew of the earth. Yep. Go, go to um, Revelation 13 and verse 12. You're talking about Rome. I'm going to stay in that, in that um, place. Revelation chapter 13, verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. Read again. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. This is going to history. The first beast he's talking about is Rome. Rome. Read again. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast. What does it mean he exercises all the power of the first beast? What does that mean? Anyone know what that means? I want new hands. Yeah, you better. The highlight in your hand. Yes. Exercise Lord of Power of the First Beast. What does that mean? Shalom. Uh, he exercises all his policies, his ways, all his, uh, even in his architecture, 
He exercises everything that Rome does. Exactly. Rome That's exactly that. what it means. I'll give you an example. Get First Maccabees 8 and verse 15 and 16. Look up. Senate, please. Abiel. First Maccabees 8, you know I want. 15 and 16. First Maccabees chapter 8, verse 15. Exercises all the power of the first beast. Remember that. Moreover, how they had made for themselves a senate house. A what house? A senate house. Go ahead. Wherein 320 men sat in council daily. 320 men they had in their senate house. 320 men they had in their senate house. Rome. Go ahead. Consulting always for the people. They spoke for the people. That would be your democracy today. Because democracy comes from Greece. Athens, Greece is where it's from. Like I said before, Greece and Rome merged together into one. Democracy and Republicans and Demo Demo Democratic and Republican came out of Rome. That's why it says exercise all the power of the beast. Because Rome was a mixture of both Democratic and Republican. Because you had the Roman Republic before it became a Roman Empire. Julius Caesar was the Caesar of the Roman Republic. Octavius Caesar was the emperor of the Roman Empire. So it's one and the same. Two heads to the same snake. Like why America plays good guy, bad guy. Republicans are bad, you're evil. The KKK formed the Democratic Party. No one knows that. KKK was formed by the Democratic, the Democratic Party was formed by the KKK. It's two heads to the same damn snake. You cannot win either way. Both of them work together. They just play, both, they just play with your mind. Like you have a choice. They'll say to you, yeah, use this orange pen right here. In your mind, over and over again, use the orange pen. Use the orange. Then, they go, then they give you, hey, here's a black pen. You're going to say in your mind, no, nah, I don't want that. I want the orange pen. Thinking it's your decision. It ain't your decision. They fed you this for years. And they go, pick the red pen. You're going to say, nah, by choice, you're going to say, I want this. Because they feed your mind over and over again the orange pen. You understand what I'm saying to y'all? So everyone says, yeah, inception, exactly. Everyone says, oh, I'm democratic. It's no difference. Whether you're Republican or Democratic, it's the same head of the same damn snake. Read it. You got what I want? The Senate? Yeah, it should show that where it comes from. Senate, where it comes from, the word. The Senate of the Roman... No, Rep I want a Wikipedia. Go to Wikipedia. Oh, yeah. It's going to explain where the word comes from. It's going to tell you where it comes from. Oh, that's it right there. Read it, read it. I'm sorry. That was it. Read it. That was good. The Senate of the Roman Republic was a political institution in the ancient Roman Republic. Roman Republic. Go ahead. It was not an elected body, but one whose members were appointed by the councils. That's what you call today the um, electoral college. Right. You don't, your vote don't matter. They use the electoral college to pick the, the former president of the United States. You have no options. They just give you the thought that you have an option. You really don't. Go ahead. And later by the censors, after a Roman magistrate served his term in office. After served his what? His term in office. What do presidents serve? Terms. Their terms in office. Go ahead. It usually was followed with automatic appointment to the Senate. Go to Senate. Go to um, Roman Senate Wikipedia. I want it's the other part that it says that, that, that the people Lord did not elect it. The members were not elected by the body. It says, first, first, con convened. first convened in 1789, the Senate of the United States was formed on the example of the ancient Roman Senate. Oh. The name is derived from Senatus, Latin for Council of Elders. Senex meaning old man in Latin. That's where America got it from. Rome. It's not, it's not secret knowledge. It's just common knowledge. And I believe they have 120, I believe, in the Senate. 120. Well, it's hundred and something, but Rome had 300 and something. So that's the only difference, huh? It says it's somewhere in there. I'm not going to look for that. It says on the bottom. The Where it say? It says, thus the Senate has had 100 senators since 1959. There we go. Had 100, so it has 100 now. But it had 300 and something, what, 320? Whatever. Y'all get the point. Go to verse 15 now, First Maccabees. First Maccabees chapter 8, verse 15. Moreover, how they had made for themselves a senate house wherein 320 men sat in council daily, consulting all way for the people. So today is 100. Go ahead. To the end, they might be well ordered. The people might be well ordered. Go ahead. 
and that they committed their government to one man every year. They committed their government to one man every year. We call him a what today? A president who presides over the people. Go ahead. Who ruled over all their country. Go ahead. And that all were obedient to that one. Mm -hmm. And that there was neither envy nor emulation among them. But eventually there was. They started killing each other. Julius C., they started stabbing them. Ah, I hate you. Whatever, get the point. Rome started killing each other. So, because Esau can't be trusted. Cut throats. They cut their own throats. Moreover, how they had made for themselves a senate house, wherein 320 men sat in council daily, consulting always for the people, to the end they might be well ordered. Things like that, that's showing you they already chose their men they want to be. Mm -hmm. Because they already counsel which one we're going to pick. It. You understand? They already set it up like that. So when you see a Negroes in, in a president seat, you're thinking that they're for their men. No, nah, that's all a part of the plan. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to wrap it up in about 10 minutes. Get um, Revelations 13 and 12 again. Revelation 13 and 12. Mm -hmm. And he exercises all the power of the first beast. Who's the first beast? Rome. Rome. Go ahead. Before him. Before him. Because America is what? An extension of Rome. Go ahead. And causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. How did, how did he cause all to worship the first beast? Who did he use? Now remember, remember, remember. Slow down, remember. Wisdom of Psalm 14. Where the man took his son. A dead man and had an occasion to do what? To deceive the whole world. So what frog is prevalent throughout the whole world? Christianity. Christianity, right? right. Now, Christianity was, was, the, was the first frog that runs the world, right? What man is the image of that Rome? Caesar Borgia, who was, of that, who was over Roman Empire. He was over Rome. He was over it. So Esau, America forces us to worship Rome even to this day through Christianity. Even today, even like Brother said earlier, through our architecture, through our politics, we worship Rome. Even the stadiums built, we worship Rome. The Olympics, we worship Rome. Well, the Greeks, the Roman Empire, we worship Rome, the Roman Empire. We say, oh, man, Obama, change. We reverence the presidents. We reverence them like gods. Jamie Foxx called Obama Jesus before. I think Mystique called him. Something like that he said as a joke, if he was joking. But you get the point. Our people think like that. Even that joke was even funny, but you get the point. But our people worship Rome one way or the other, whether they know it or not. Going back to that orange pen I gave y'all before, that analogy. They put it in here. Read on. Uh, verse 12 again. He ex and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast. Through, through his policies and through his religions. Go ahead. Whose deadly wound was healed. Whose deadly, because Rome was, a, was what? Ancient Rome was, was it, did it last forever? Eventually it was what? It was destroyed, so it was wounded. But it did not stay down. Eventually it rose up as what? That's why. Jump back down to verse 11 again. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. That's Rome again. It's America. America is an extension of Rome. It came back to life again. A deadly wound was healed. She rose up again as America. Babylon the Great. That's a biblical name. Babylon the Great. So now, jump to verse 2. Revelation 13 and 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. I ain't got time to finish this verse. I'll tell you right now. So I'm just going to touch the first part. I'll touch it. I'm just going to skim it. Get, um... First Maccabees 141, real quick. The leopard. No, I want that. Hold on. Yeah, I'm going to go through it real quick. Matter of fact, go to Daniel first. 
Daniel 7, and read verse uh, 6. I'll get set up for y'all. Daniel was shown a vision of four major empires that were going to rule this planet. He mentioned one would be Babylon. That's that the lion in verse 4. Babylon. Write that down. The lion in verse 4, Daniel 7, 4, is Babylon. Under Nebuchadnezzar, under Nebuchadnezzar the second. Then you have the bear. The bear would be the Medo-Persian Empire in verse 5. The bear, Medo-Persian Empire. A joint, a joint ruled empire. Medes and Persians together. Um, and then the, the third one would be, leopard would be Greece. Greece, Greece, Greece. The leopard is Greece. You follow? Because it's a swift, fierce creature that conquers fast. Because under Alexander the Great, Greece conquered within 12 years. He conquered at 20 years old, he was ruled by 32. He died 32. After he conquered everybody, he died from syphilis, from his homosexual anti-lifestyle he lived, which America pushes today because America is an extension of that Greco-Roman culture today. Go to Revelations now. Daniel. Are you, uh, no, Daniel 7, verse 6. I'm sorry. Daniel 7, verse 6. Daniel chapter 7, verse 6. After this I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. Four, mean, four wings means he conquered further. He had more wings so he could travel further, so he conquered more. Go ahead. The beast also had... The beast had also four heads. Because when Alexander died, four of his boys took his place. Lysimachus, write this down. You have four generals. Lysimachus, Cassander. I'm going to say it again. I know you probably say, who the, how, you, how the hell you spell Lysimachus? Lysimachus, L Y. Simachus, L Y S. L Y S. I. M A C H U S. The name of the general? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, please put it on the screen because I'm going to mess that name up horrible. Some of y'all were here earlier in the class and I had went over some of this, right? Y'all remember that? Okay. Yeah, Lysimachus Cassander. C A S S A N D E R. Yeah, please put that on the screen. I, I, don't, I don't know. I was right? Okay. There we go. Seleucius, Seleucius, Ptolemy, Lysimachus, and Cassander. Those are the four heads that took over when Alexander the Greek died. Okay? That's the four heads of the leopard. That's history right there. Daniel prophesying of this empire before it even came into existence. The Bible's a true book. You can't mess with this book. It's a problem. All right, Alexander's general, Stanger B.C. All right, read it again. Just start from the four wings. Which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. And then verse 7 goes into the fourth beast, which is not mentioned in detail, but by Esdras. All right, fourth beast would be Rome. Write that down. The fourth beast is Rome. All right, so let's go to Revelations now. Go back there. I ain't got much time. Wrap it up, so. I ain't get to the third fog, so I'll just leave it alone. That's what it is. Next time. Wow. I ain't got time to go to it. <laughs> Judaism. Judaism. That's the, the that's another. I don't know. Revelations 13. Where y'all at? What was that? Who's that verse 2? 13 verse 2. Revelation chapter 13 verse 2. And and the reason why Judaism, remember this video earlier today, with an Edomite, was saying, oh, these scrolls, wrapping him in the scrolls of Jerusalem and this and that, and this, uh, on the path of the Jewish people, I anoint this man king. So all that stuff ties in together. All of that ties in together. They're all one and the same. Modern Judaism is Christianity. It's the same thing. Make their own rules up. Don't keep no laws. They're full of crap. Celebrating all kind of Halloween, Christmas. So-called Jews are full of crap. They're doing all kind of pedophilia too. That's what the Christian church does. Same, they're all one and the, they're all on the same bed together. Read that. Revelation chapter 13, verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. This is Revelation 13. Remember, Revelation 12 said the great red dragon. 13 is pertaining to the same exact beast, just giving us more details of this beast from chapter 12. Y'all follow? 12 and 13 is just 
13 is continuing from chapter 12. We are, go ahead. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. So read it from the top. I'm sorry, read from the top. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. So this great red dragon he saw was like unto a leopard. The great leopard is what? Leopard is what? So this, this beast was like Greece. Go ahead. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. Who's the bear? Because the Medo-Persian Empire was a joint empire. America rules jointly as what? America rules jointly as what? He has what policy? In his policies, what is he? No. His policies, politics, what is he? Politically, what is he? Remember I said about Rome. Rome was a what? It was a democracy and a... So America rules as a joint empire. It's democratic on one side, republic on the other. Y'all follow? So it's like Medo-Persia also. But it says the bear leans on one side because the Persians are stronger. So in America, which one's stronger, republicanism or democracy? What's stronger? Because Exactly, democracy. Because democracy is rooted by modern Christianity. So democracy holds a stronger foothold than republicans. Y'all follow? That's why it says two horns of a lamb. It's Republican and democracy. Go ahead. Yeah. That's why all that show we see going on right there, um, Donald Trump most likely might lose the election. Yep. Because you had the same thing with Mitt Romney, speaking yeah. reckless. That's just a show. That's just a show. Act, yeah. Democracy run this country. Mm -hmm. Or Ross Perot for those of us around yeah, years the big ago. Ears, yeah, <laughs> huh? fly away, so yeah, yeah. Dumbo. <laughs> they said we don't. These men can't be controlled. We ain't dealing with them. Yep. Read up. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Who's the lion? Babylon, because Nebuchadnezzar spoke bold against the Lord, and the Lord judged him temporarily. So America, remember it says, speak like a dragon. In Revelations speaks bold as a lion. Lions are bold and fierce animals. Go ahead. And the dragon gave him his power. So now it says the dragon gave him his power. So is this the same dragon in chapter 12? No, it's not. Get a Luke 4 and 6. What dragon is this here? The dragon. I mentioned, remember I mentioned earlier, the technology. Over the course of the years, the TVs, the phones, the cars, the video games. Over such a short amount of time, technology has grown. Even the nuclear weapons. Luke 4 and 6. Let's see what this dragon is. The book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. Wait, the, read again. All this what? All this power will I give thee. Remember, so the dragon gave him his power in Revelations. So the dragon here is the devil himself. Go ahead. And the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. So... Go ahead, I'm sorry. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. So now we know who, why America is in rulership today. Why no country can stand against her today, no matter how powerful their weapons are. They go, yeah, I hate America. Yeah, we're going to bomb them. They don't bomb them. Because they know who run this place. Spiritually. And physically, in terms of the nation itself, eat them. Go back to Revelation 13, verse 4 again. The and bottom part. Verse Verse 2. In verse 2, I'm sorry, verse 2. Sorry. And the dragon gave him his power uh -huh. and his seat. His seat means his what? His position, his rulership. That's why he rules. Go ahead. And great authority. This goes back to his seat and great authority. His technological advancements, his power, his technology. The Lord Satan said, I'm going to give that to you. Whomsoever I will, I give it. That's why he thrives on paganism. His statues, his movies, his holidays, so-called holidays, folly days, I call them. Thanksgiving, Halloween. He forces all of us indirectly to worship Satan because that gives him his power. You got to keep worshiping. That's why media is excessive 24-7. You know how long Halloween is now? It's a whole month long. First, they have, I'm going to tell you how, what I mean. They'll have career day. Halloween, will, they'll have the, 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 the freaking parades and stuff early in October, before Halloween even begins. Then as soon as you're coming out of Halloween, you're leading into Christmas. That they merge like Halloween. They merge them together. They bring the costumes in the store for the little stupid kids. So there's, right, so there's no gap, even in the stores. You go into the store, 
It'll be freaking January. It's already Valentine's Day stuff in there. Already. There was a time I saw Christmas stuff, I think, in the summertime. I said, why is this Christmas stuff in the summertime? Because they're already preparing your mind. Okay, yeah, it's hot now, but wintertime, I got to make sure. Because that orange pen again, I have an option. No, you don't. Yeah, uh, That's that witchcraft. That's that sorcery. They cannot turn. Our people going to finally realize that. You know how people say we got our own will? Mm -hmm. We have no will. No, the white man will you got. Yeah. Will of the Gentiles. Yep, the will of the Gentiles. Let's because be you can only do what you see. So that means you don't have your own will. Read Luke 4 and 6 again. And give me First Peter also. First Peter 4. Oh. Yeah, no, you see it. Luke 4 and 6. Real quick, go at that again. I'm going to show you what his will is. Luke 4 and 6. And the devil said unto him. And the devil said unto him. All this power will I give thee. And the glory of them. For that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. Read it again. The bo bottom part. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. So now, get, do, do the other nations have a God? Do the other nations, let me ask you again. Do the other nations have a God at all? No. What are their gods? Idols. Are, gods, are the idols real? No. So by default, who is their God then? That's exactly what their God is. Because they have no God. If you have no God, you're without God. You're following the devil. First Peter 4. And verse 3. Let's see who Satan's, what Satan's will is. This goes back to first. That's why he said in Wisdom of Solomon, I'm going to visit the Gentiles from their idols that they made. That became a snare and a stumbling block to the people. First Peter 4 and 3, which became a snare and a stumbling block to Adam and Eve also. First Peter chapter 4, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. The will of who? The will of the Gentiles. Which is whose will? The devil's will. Go ahead. So when, let's, see what, let's see what the Gentiles or Satan's will is. Watch. Go ahead. When we walked in lasciviousness. That's a heathen's law. Go ahead. Lust. That's Satan's law. Excess of wine. Reveling. That's what happened in that club over there. The Lord sent the Israelite in there to, 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 clean, to, to handle his business. Based upon seeing that reveling in there. Go ahead. Banquetings. And Banquetings, it goes into your, your parades, your birthdays, your... Thanksgiving, your New Year's, Halloween's. Go ahead. You know, that was God's vengeance. I got to say it like it is. That was God's vengeance that happened in that doggone thing. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine the abominations that was going on in there? Yep. <laughs> read, read, the read the rest. The Banquetings uh -huh. and abominable idolatry. An abominable what? An abominable idolatry. That's the will of the Gentiles. Abominable idols. Which is the will of who? The devil. So, Revelations, one more time. Let me wrap it up. Is that how we get it wrong? Can't go. Revelation 13, verse 4 again. Well, verse mm, 2 again. Revelation 13 and 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And great what? And great authority. Authority. So, like, all the, so Satan was Satan gave America great authority, power to rule and to do, dominate everyone on this earth, whether it be politically, or whether it be technologically, or religiously, because America is a great melting pot where every religion is here. That's why we can't get along here. There's confusion here. Other places you can't have that over there, but here you're welcome. Come fulfill the will of the Gentiles: lust, banquetings, revelings, drunkenness. Halloween, Thanksgiving, New Year's, Jamaican Day Parade, West Indian Day Parade, yep. Puerto Rican Day Parade, Juve. Come, come. You know that. Keep that, Satan strong. Yep. Keep us powerful. Keep us strong. Keep Satan giving us, keep, allow Satan to give us our power. The more you, evil you do, the stronger we get, the longer we last. That's what they do. All right? So I got to end it there. All right? Come on. That's it. We'll just uh, Hello, this I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ.
YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.